In one of the most important days in the British parliamentary calendar, Winnell was in the thick of things as Westminster decided the makeup of our new government. Media scrums, raging protesters and under fire politicians yeah, yeah. were washing Westminster on Tuesday as Britain's political day of destiny ended in the formation of a new Conservative and Liberal Democrat coalition, with David Cameron taking the country into a new era. He lost the election a week ago. Well off. He's no longer Passionate passers by declared their political preferences in the media frenzy. Cameron out. Well, do so. That's the lovely thing about our country, we can say whatever we like. It's lovely. I think it's an absolute disgrace. <laughs> One former Member of Parliament remained philosophical about his future. Of course, you just have to accept that that was what happened and get up the next day and say, what will I do next? I haven't finished with politics, but I don't know what that holds. It's still too raw. Meanwhile, Winchester and Chandler's Ford has a new representative in Westminster. 5.30 a.m. on May the 7th, Conservative candidate Steve Bryan became the new Member of Parliament for Winchester. He defeated Martin Todd of the Liberal Democrats in a hard-fought but close campaign. Winnell got this exclusive interview with the victorious Tory at his new Westminster home. A, a baptism of fire is, is not underestimating it. It was a very long day uh, and uh, we actually worked it out. The count took eight hours from the start to the declaration. It, it is utterly, utterly exciting, a completely humbling, completely overwhelming, every adjective that you can possibly think of. I represent everyone, whether they voted for me or not, and people have come to me with problems, and then my harshest critic and my biggest supporter will get equal treatment. We will have to wait and see whether Winchester's new politician can make his mark. Stuart Appleby in Westminster, Winchester News Online. After Steve Bryan's victory in the election, the Liberal Democrats fought back by taking over Winchester City Council from the Tories. Grant Payne reports. It was here at River Park Leisure Centre where the dramatic 48-hour political events took place. First of all, the Tories won their yeah. first MP seat here for over 13 years, with Steve Bryan taking over from Mark Oton of the Liberal Democrats. But then, just 48 hours later, the Liberal Democrats managed to overturn a previously Tory-run council by a majority of just one. Now, how is this change going to affect the people of Winchester? The key points are definitely surrounding the green agenda and making it easier for people to lead greener lifestyles. For one thing, we actually think it's more enjoyable when you've got streets that people are walking through and cycling along rather than streets which are full of cars. For me personally, I'm going to be taking the portfolio which, portfolio which deals with the money oh, wow. um, and the council has real financial problems and if in the next couple of years I can straighten that out and put the council back on an even financial keel then we'll be able to really make a difference to people. Although the Conservatives fear that this may be a backward step for Winchester. I think uh, that the local economy, the businesses, the uh, uh, various uh, uh, industries in which uh, this, this city thrives uh, will suffer. It remains to be seen if the Lib Dem Council will approve Winchester or not. Grant Payne, Winchester News Online. The University of Winchester's women's hockey team found themselves in a race row following a themed dress-up at last week's BOP. Joey Lipscomb reports. A race row broke out at the University of Winchester this week following an African-themed dress-up by the women's hockey team at a social event. Members of the African Caribbean Asian Society lodged complaints to the union expressing their displeasure. I got a phone call from Henrietta and um, she sounded really upset saying um, that there were pictures on Facebook of girls from the hockey team that had dressed up as African women um, and went to BOP. It, it was just unbelievable that people will think that dressing up as African women is a costume. This is how we live every day. It was really offensive what they did. It wasn't really, it wasn't a joke. We don't find it funny at all. At all. So. Following the complaints, the team sent apology letters to the society and also released this statement. Um, as captain, on behalf of Winchester Women's Hockey, um, I want to take this opportunity to um, send out our sincere, sincerest apologies um, and that I hope you regret our actions um, of the dress-up that we did last Wednesday. Um, we no way meant to offend anybody and we're very sorry if we did. Um, 
we take into account our poor choice of costume and that it may have been a bad decision and once again I send out our sincerest apologies. Well, the student union has to take into account the welfare of all its students and when a complaint is made, we have to deal with it in the right manner. Uh, this situation here, I do not believe that anyone try, uh, deliberately tried to offend anyone, uh, but however, we had to take uh, the complaint seriously, which we did, and then we uh, expressed the seriousness into uh, the people who were being uh, appealed against. It was here at the vault where the ladies' hockey's African-themed dress-up sparked controversy among the African-Caribbean Asian society. The incident has brought to light the need for change in the union's policies on event nights. When these changes will be made remains to be seen. This is Joey Lipscomb, Winchester News Online. Latest figures show a soaring tide in teenage pregnancy in Hampshire. In areas such as Eastleigh, the rate has risen by as much as 12%. Claire Icebrandy reports. With the teen pregnancy rate in Hampshire on the rise, I took a look around Winchester to gauge how much advice there is for sexually active youths and young women facing motherhood. I think there is enough support for mothers, and, but I think they need to do a lot of the work themselves to go and find it, because it is out there and there's leaflets and stuff. He was born in Winchester and they were lovely, looked after us really well. And um, living in Eastley, we've got the Shore Start Centre, like Chamberlain Children's Centre, so there's loads going on there. So yeah, like, you're never really lonely, there's always something to do. Um, it just depends on what they need, but first of all, they would get absolute support and encouragement from me. There is undoubtedly a lot of help out there for young mothers, but is all this support an incentive for young women to have children earlier? Oh, even though it's a good help, the government give out a lot of freebies, so it's so easy to do. I mean, if you came straight out of school and had a baby, you'd be supported 100%. You wouldn't have to work, you know, because of all the benefits and things out there. So I think that's why it's quite a lot of young people do it, because it's the easy option. Whether it's due to government support or not, the teen pregnancy rate in Hampshire is on the rise. If you need any help or advice with sexual health or family planning, visit Winchester's Gum Clinic on Romsey Road. Clara Brandy, Winchester News Online. And now Josh Duffy with the sport. Thank you, John. Well, in cricket, Hampshire are in a good position at tea on day three of their LV County Championship match against Somerset at the Rose Bowl. Sean Irvine's career best of 237 not out contributed to their total of 512 at the close of play on day two. Somerset resumed this morning and at the tea break have recovered well, not well, notching 311 runs at a loss of just four wickets. That's all for your sports now, but stay tuned to Winnell over the next couple of weeks where we'll be bringing you the latest coverage of a range of sports, including a preview of the World Cup in South Africa. That's all for now. Back to John. And finally, if politics and sport isn't your cup of tea, our reporter Paul Corrette may have the answer. Tiffin Tea Rooms here in Austin has been stirring up a storm, bringing an award of excellence for its tea. I stopped by to find out what's so special about their tea. The Award of Excellence was given to Tiffin Tea Rooms by the UK Tea Council. The council inspectors assess the flavour, strength, temperature, quality and range of teas. The standard and presentation of food, attentiveness of staff and the overall ambience of the tea room was also taken into account. A huge achievement for us. We've worked very hard and very pleased to, to achieve the award. Sharon says that the key to the tea room's success is keeping their tea local. We've worked very closely with, with our supplier and he's blended our own house tea. We've got 24 different types of tea. Um, they're all loose leaf, none of them are in tea bags. It's just really looking for the quality of tea and also that it's uh, fair trade, that's important to us as well. Well obviously I couldn't leave without tasting some of Tiffin's Tea Room's now award winning tea. Certainly taste award winning. This is Paul Correct, Winchester News Online, Oxford. Thank you for watching. Join us again next week and for the latest developments, log on to winnell.co.uk.